Welcome back to Vlog 25. We're in Poker House. We just won a couple hundred dollars on the 1 2 table, and a 1 3 table opened up with a thousand dollar cap. We buy in for around $750, so $250 of profit from 1 2. And the first hand we're going to look down at is Pocket 8's The Snowmen. We're going to open the action to the standard Texas size $20. We get two callers, the cutoff and the big blind. We're playing monkey in the middle. We go to a favorable flop. It's nine do six rainbow. There's $65 in the middle. And when it checks to me from the big blind, we're going to put in $35 as a continuation bet. I think I'll be doing this with all my ace highs. Sometimes I'll be doing it on a disconnected board like this. We can get a lot of hands to fold. Jack 10, King, Queen, etc. You know what I'm saying? So only the cutoff ends up calling and we're heads up. The turn is the four of clubs. I decided to bet pretty large on this card. I think uh, this might be an overplay, but I'm pretty happy with the sizing. We put in $110 and he calls quickly. Now that my radar is going off after this quick call, there's $355. This pot has ballooned up. It's very big and the river is the jack of clubs. I don't think I should ever ever continue on this card. So now we're going to check to our opponent and possibly go into check call, maybe full, depending on the sizing and how I feel. So I check and our opponent decides to put out a chunky bet, almost like a value size. He puts out $210. Now when he puts this bet out, it feels like two pair or a set or nothing else because why would he go for a value size if he had a pair of nines? He would just check this back. So what is he saying? He has pocket jacks pocket queens that he didn't re-raise pre-flop in position. I don't know if I'm buying this story and in Texas there's a lot of bluffing going on. I haven't seen this player show down so if we do put in the call it's going to be a big risk and that's what we end up doing because the story doesn't make a lot of sense and surprisingly he does have that exact hand we we're thinking of pocket jacks slow played he got the maximum on a perfect board where we we're overplaying our hand that was just an under pair to the top pair on the flop and we decided to continue thinking that he was calling down with just random ace highs and over cards because that's very common here in texas but we ended up losing the 775 dollars pot to start off the vlog it's okay we're gonna keep our head up just a few hands later, we look down at pocket sevens on the button and we're going to squeeze over a short stack that just raised to $60 with three callers. So we jam with our pocket pair. We only have 250 behind. So this is a great jam and a good spot. We end up getting called off by the short stack for a hundred plus dollars. The flop ends up coming ace high. The turn is a queen and the river is the nine of diamonds. We show our pocket sevens and our opponent turns over a hand that beats us king queen offsuit so we're gonna lose that flip we're already down a few hundred dollars all right in this hand we looked down at ace king offsuit in the cutoff there's a ten dollar straddle on right now and it ends up getting two limpers we have the under the gun and middle position to put in the limp and now we're gonna raise it up big with this premium hand we put out a hundred dollars the reason we did this because the two limpers had short stacks we don't want them to get a good price to see a flop so we're okay with getting it all in. I'm assuming they will jam if they have anything that is decent. So that's what we do. We put out the $100 and we end up getting it all in against Kip, our good friend at Poker House. And he has pocket fours and we decided to run it twice. So with $500 in the middle, we're gonna go twice. We decided to turn over our cards. He has pocket fours, we have ace king. On the first board, we scoop with two pair. And on the second board, he drills a set. So it's just a chop pot, but lots of action and lots of fun happening here at Poker House. In this next hand, we're gonna look down at pocket queens and battle post flop. We have $360 in our stack. I think we should be adding on for the max always when we're playing at games like this for the most possible value. You know, if our opponent has pocket jacks, he gets all in with $1,000 behind. We won't be able to cover him. And if he has ace king, we want to flip, especially with one of the best pairs. We'll, we're going to be slightly ahead. So a little disappointed in myself for not adding on. Let's get to the action. We're in middle position with pocket queens. There's two limps and it gets to us. We're going to raise it up to $25. We have the middle position two player on my left and under the gun put in the call. So now we're going three ways to a board with $75 in the middle. Flop is jack seven three rainbow. We're playing monkey in the middle again. So when it checks to us, we're going to see bet here for $35, just like we would with almost anything. It folds to the under the gun player and he decides to put in the call. So now our heads up $150 in the middle and the turn is the three of hearts. And now our opponent decides to lead on this card. I'm not sure whether I should be raising here or calling, but I end up going to the tank for a long time, trying to decide what to do. 
and we think the best decision is just to call and play passively and see what he wants to do on the river. So we put in the call, and the river is the seven of spades. So now it's jack seven, three, three, seven. When he decides to lead again for $50, we go into the tank again. What are we raising to get value against? I think it's jacks. Maybe ace high if he wants to be sticky. This is Texas. We'll get in there really light against raises. You guys would be very surprised. So after looking at this board texture and trying to figure out what we're trying to get value from, I doubt he has a seven or a three because he would bet very, very large thinking that we have a jack trying to get value from that. So I'm assuming he has a jack himself and just trying to squeak out as much value from an ace high. I know this sounds kind of silly, but the goal is to get the most from a jack right now. So we're gonna raise. He ends up snap folding. So maybe he was just bluffing with some weird combo like four or five offsuits and just wanted to hit his six for the straights. Uh, that's the only thing that makes sense. So we scoop this $300 pot. It's coming our way. Glad to have one coming our direction. And now we're on to the next hand. On to the next hand, we look down at ace queen offsuit. We raise it up to $20 from under the gun plus two, and it gets to the cutoff. This guy's name is Gil Jack Poker, a very well-known YouTuber who's crushing it right now. Shout out to my boy. He's uh, out in Canada trying to crush the tables online for tournaments. So wish you luck, man. He raises it up to $60. And then the button goes for the all-in play. And I think that our ace queen is probably not good a lot of the time here. Who went all-in is our good friend Kip, and he's a solid player. And I don't think this is a bluff, but we are beating hands like eights through pocket jacks. And that's sort of what we're putting him on his range. And I doubt Gil's going to call our all-in if we put it all-in as well. And we are willing to gamble versus the top of his range, except for obviously we're going to be in bad shape if he has kings, but we'll have some equity on it, some board. So now we're going to get a little crazy and go for the five bet jam. We put our entire stack in the middle and Gil ends up folding and we're going heads up against Kip and he shows us pocket jack. So we are slightly behind, but we're going towards a board. And if you guys want to follow Kip on TikTok, check him out. It's hanging with Kip. He's a really cool guy. But now we're going to go to two boards, pocket jacks versus ace queen. He's ahead. The first board comes 10 ace king. So now if he hits his jack, he will be dead. So we're guaranteed to win this hand unless it goes runner, runner, jacks. The turn is the six of spades. The board is not paired and the river is the jack of hearts. So now we get a straight on the top board and take that one. On the next board, the flop comes 775. We are behind. The turn is the eight of clubs. So now any club will give us the flush because we have the queen of clubs and the river is unbelievable. The king of clubs, four clubs on the board. Our queen of clubs plays with the king and queen high flush. We're going to scoop this entire pot. I'm sorry, Kip, man. This guy's an awesome dude. Great people here at Poker House. I'm so sad that it closed, but it's all good. We're on to the next. And don't forget, if you guys want to play with me online, click the link in the bio for all the action, small stakes to high stakes, PLO and tournaments. It's called the Cheddar Club. Just click the link in the bio and follow the telegram and message our team. Would love to play with you guys on there. The snowmen make an appearance again in the vlog. We looked down at pocket eights in the big blind. There's two limps, both the maniacs on the table and the button straddles on. And so it skips over to the button and now it's on me. We complete, we don't want to bloat the pot with uh, this pocket pair, we want to set mine. And the button checks his option. So now we're going four ways to a flop, which is queen, jack, four with two clubs. Surprisingly, it checks around. The turn is the four of spades. And I decide to bet here because if our opponents had a queen or a jack, I think they would have bet sometimes. So we decided to put out $15 and Mr. Regis calls. This is the local stud. He's an old guy, but he plays poker. He's aggressive. He knows how to put out big bluffs and big value bets as well. So Mr. Regis's history with us has not been good. I think he's beat us around 80% of the time whenever we play together. So we want to be cautious. Until the river is the eight of clubs. So we end up going runner, runner, full house. So we have eights full of fours. We boat up. And now I think the best move here, since it's a club, which is the best card in the deck, is to check raise Mr. Regis because he might have a flush draw type of hand here. So we check and Mr. Regis does not disappoint. After Mr. Regis bets $140, we're just going to take our sweet time and enjoy this moment because you know we got to go all in. He has around $450, $500 behind. So we're going to go all in for $500. And Mr. Regis snap calls. And we end up beating 10 five of clubs for the 10 high flush 
on this board and we scoop it and now it's coming our direction an enormous pot coming our direction what a feeling lucky 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 me and don't forget to subscribe and support me on my poker journey i'd appreciate you all really helps out the channel too if you like and comment would love to see what you guys think about how i play even if it's bad even if it's good whatever you think we have officially climbed out of the hole. Our stack is around $1,400 in this hand. There's a $10 straddle on, and we looked down to pocket sixes in the middle position, and we're gonna decide to call here. We like to raise a lot of the time, but we decided to just limp in and to see what's gonna happen. We ended up getting three ways, the big blind, myself, and the straddler. So now we're going to a board, which is six, four, deuce with two hearts. We have top set. I decided to bet $25, and both opponents call. This is not looking too good, and it's even worse when the turn brings in the five of diamonds, so any three is now a straight. So now it checks around, and the river is the seven of clubs. The button player decides to lead on this card for $40, and I think we are obligated to put in a call with a set here. We can fold sometimes, depending on the player type, but we put in the call, and then the button, Mr. Regis, puts in the raise for $200. The leader snap folds, and now we go into the tank. The only thing that he would have is a three, so why wouldn't he bet on the turn when he has the straight? So he checks and he just has an eight here, but what eight calls on the flop when I bet seven eight or five eight? I don't know what the hell he has that has an eight in it that isn't a heart draw. So it has to be a heart draw with an eight. Like, what does he have? Eight, seven of hearts? If he had a heart draw, I thought he'd bet on the turn, you know, to get us out of the pot. So I kind of end up going to the tank. I think I should be snap folding here, but we end up convincing that Mr. Regis can have a bluff here sometimes. So we put in the call, which is kind of a punt, and he turns over Jack, eight, offsuit. I just don't understand why this hand calls on the flop. This is Mr. Regis. This guy has these hands in his range. Jack eight offsuit. Like what the hell? Why is he calling? All good. This is just part of the game. He wants to play and uh, we're okay with delivering some money back to him because he's a fun guy. I'm glad we were able to play with him a couple more times before Poker House closed. So now the winning frequency against Mr. Regis is 15% us, 85% him. In this hand, we looked down at king, queen, offsuit, middle position. Under the gun raises to $25, an action player. We decided to put in the call rather than re-raise here. And then middle position, two calls. So we're going three ways to a flop, which is king, queen, ace. So we have bottom two pair on a very connected and wet board. Two clubs on there. Another gun decides to bet for $15. And I think versus this small size, we should be raising against all club draws, any tens. We want to deny equity from a lot of hands right here. So we raise up to $45 and then middle position two snap calls my raise. I know it's not too big relative to the pot, but our opponent to our left feels recreational. So when he snap calls, it feels sort of face up. He might have an ace with a 10, a king with a 10, maybe as a club draw. He didn't have to think about a lot. So he has something that was easy to think about. So MP2 calls and then under the gun calls. So now this pot is around $200 and the turn is the seven of clubs. I think we're ready to give up here when both opponents call our raise on the flop, but it ends up checking around surprisingly. So now we're going to the river, which is the nine of diamonds. Kind of an odd card, but I think it's a blank. Uh, sometimes Jack 10, Maybe Jack-10 of clubs or Jack-10 offsuit with a club is in their hand range, but when Under the Gun leads for $80, this feels just relatively weak. And I think we should be putting in the call here and not re-raising because we're gonna get uh, called by better if we do re-raise. So we put in the call and middle position two player folds. We show and he ends up just mucking. Uh, he said that I got it. So we scoop this $370 pot with two pair, a little weird and crazy, but that's why we love Texas because these pots are way too fun to be involved in. In this next hand, we look down at ace seven of hearts on the button. It folds to me. We're gonna raise it up to $20 and we end up getting a call from Mr. Regis. And now we're going heads up to a flop, which is unbelievable. Seven, seven, eight with two spades. We have trip sevens. It checks to me, I'm gonna bet 25. And Mr. Regis calls, nothing crazy. The turn is the queen of clubs. And now it's time for us to overbet and get max value versus any queen holding, eight holding, maybe a pocket nines, pocket tens. And we bet $105 and Mr. Regis puts in the call again. I'm kind of surprised by this and then confused. I don't know what he has here. Maybe it's a spade draw. There's $300 in the middle and the river is the nine of diamonds. So a hand like what? 
So hand like Jack 10, the gutter ball got there and hands like 9, 10, just got a, a pair of nines. So now I decided to bet large here because we need to get value against all other sevens. That's essentially what we need to target here and maybe ace queen every once in a while. So we decided to go very, very large. We bet a little bit over the pot, $310 and Mr. Regis snap calls. And when he does this, we have the nut seven. We turn over ace seven and he shows us five seven offsuit. So that is a cooler and we're back to even grounds for winning frequency. I'm 20% and he's 80% of the time winning against us. So maybe times have changed against Mr. Regis. We will see, but we end up scooping this $920 pot. What a dream scenario. What a dream cooler. This is what poker players think about when they're going to bed are these exact moments, declining and losing chips. And that's because we play PLO bomb pots. And sometimes when the table wants to play PLO, we will do it. So we've been losing a lot of money and we end up getting quartered with nine, eight, jack, 10 with three hearts. We end up having the nuts straight and uh, we lose a lot of money in that pot because we end up going all in because we have the nuts on one board and that's hurt a lot. Wow. Um, okay. Maybe he's not an action player and maybe I'm the action player and he knows what he's doing and I'm just punting money and getting lucky. Maybe I just got to all reverse, guys. <laughs> and that will bring us to the last no limit hold'em hand. And this next hand, we look down at king, ten of clubs from the small blind. There's three limpers, and we're going to raise large to $50. We're out of position. We have a great hand, and we want to make sure we're heads up. That's the goal with this raise, and it's tailored to Texas sizing. On a regular 1, 2, or 1, 3 table, we wouldn't be doing this but this is a very specific size for this instance. What ends up happening, the middle position player jams for $365. In our notes, he's an action player and we are okay with flipping against low pocket pairs like deuces through nines, but if he has a hand like ace king, king, ace queen, ace jack, like we do not have a lot of equity against ace king, but ace queen and ace jack, we do have some equity against. And we wanna give action to the action players I'm not the most proud of this, but we're going to put in the call here. This is very loose, not something I suggest, but we want to have some fun here and give some action because we want to receive action. One, one time. So we decided to put in the chips. The pot is $700 and the flop is unbelievable. Queen Jack nine with two clubs. We flop the nuts. The turn is the six of hearts and the river is the three of diamonds. We show our king 10 and we win against ace queen offsuits. So we were against a hand that we have a decent amount of equity against and we got so lucky on that flop. Maybe he's not an action player and maybe I'm the action player and he knows what he's doing and I'm just punting money and getting lucky. Maybe I just got to all reverse, guys. <laughs> so this is going to be the last hand. We end up losing two PLO hands in a row for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So that's going to hurt our cash out. And now we're going to head to the cage. Oh, also, uh, here's pocket aces. We just see better flop and take it down. Nothing exciting, but uh, hope you enjoy looking at pocket aces. So now we're going to head to the cage. We bought into the game for $1,030 and we end up cashing out for $1,989 for a profit of $959. That's what I'm talking about. What a crazy session. I feel like we could have played better and made some better folds, but that's the whole point of playing poker is to progress, have some fun. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.